I'm so stupid. I'm such an idiot. How could I do that? You got to stop saying that kind of stuff and say, I have the mind of Christ. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Something good's going to happen in my life today. A miracle is going to come out of my mouth. A miracle is going to show up. God's wisdom is going to show up. God's going to open the doors that no man can close. Welcome back to Think Like a Champion, a podcast dedicated to helping you win in every way and enjoy every day. You know, God created life to be enjoyed. There is stress, there is pressure, there is struggle, there is tension, but God can work in our lives in the midst of all of that. And our ability to manage that and harness those things is a gift from God. And I want to help you to harness those things and particularly today we're going to dive into the priceless resource of energy spiritual energy emotional energy physical energy they all work together the energy of God in particular is what I'm going to focus on today this divine gift that powers our dreams and fuels our actions our habits and enables us to accomplish God's divine purpose for our life. You have a purpose. You were created with purpose. We're going to discover divine energy for your divine purpose. Think about that. To have a purpose that is beyond yourself, you have to tap into an energy that is beyond yourself. And that energy is the energy of the Holy Spirit, the energy of our Heavenly Father, our Creator. Philippians chapter 4, 13, a very well-known verse, but we, we sometimes don't see this verse in light of the energy that we need to get through our day and to power through our difficult times, but it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now, we can't do all things at one time, but we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, Christ is the anointed one inside of me. There's an anointing to do what you're created to do. There's an anointing to be the leader that you're created to be. There's an anointing to be the husband or the wife that you're created to be. There's an anointing to be the parent you're created to be. There's an anointing to be the business person or the professional that you are created to be. And we want to tap into that anointing. What is that anointing? It's the energy of God. It's the oil of God. Now, before I dive more into this, I want to thank everyone who's written a review or shared this podcast on social media. Thank you for partnering with me and helping expand our community of champions. That's what we're building, a community of champions, and we can't do it without each other. But every post, every review really does make a difference in helping us reach more people, so thank you. Now, in discovering divine energy for your divine purpose, I want you to picture for a moment energy as divine currency. God equips us with this energy and it is designed, we're designed to direct our strength, direct our energy in God's purpose for our lives. As long as our dreams harmonize with God's vision, there will always be enough energy to fulfill your divine purpose. Uh, in fact, if we would get a hold of this, that our energy is really our wealth, that it's not about how much money we have in our bank account, it's about possessing and preserving energy. When we misplace or misdirect energy into needless things, toxic relationships, gossip, social media, trying to get approval from people, we are wasting our energy and we're, we're taking from the energy source that is designed for our divine purpose. So let me give you an example, a scripture in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20, because the first thing we have to do to experience this, this flow and flood of divine energy is to value energy and to value the power of God and to value the strength of God. Proverbs 21, 20 says, precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling. Precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. Our energy is like this precious treasure and this oil, and it requires that we are wise in how we invest it. It requires for us to, to discover it, then to develop it, and then to direct it in the right way, to distribute it in the right direction. 
So, uh, and I'll get into some of the things that drain us from our energy and drain our energies for, for, from being able to be direct and focused on achieving God's dream for our lives. But, you know, there's another great verse in Colossians chapter 3 that I wrote down as well. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord and not unto men. See, our energy physically, emotionally, and spiritually, when we do it unto God, when we realize that our lives are created for a higher purpose than just our own satisfaction, but we're created to and we're designed to become the best version of ourselves and to give ourselves as a gift to this world. Just as Jesus came to give himself as a gift for our sins, we're in life, we're in this world to give ourselves as gifts, as an offering to others. Our life is really an offering to others. That's why we should take care of our life. That's why we should take care of ourselves emotionally, take care of ourselves spiritually, take care of, our souls, of ourselves financially and physically because our life is an offering. Now think about this. Our life is an offering. And what are we, who are we offering it to? Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may present unto God a, a reasonable act of worship, that present your bodies to God as your spiritual service of worship. He says in verse 1 of Romans chapter 12, present your, your, your body, present your vessel, present yourself to God as an offering, as an act of worship. And what are we doing by presenting ourselves to him? First of all, we're preparing the offering, our own life, by being the best that we can be and moving in that direction each day. You don't, it doesn't happen overnight, but you, you're going in the, in the right direction daily. We develop ourselves in such a way that we give ourselves to God in a way that he can use us, in a way that we can add to the solutions in this world rather than adding to the problems in this world. Maybe I can share it with you in this way, that in this earth are all the resources, all the natural resources that we will ever need. They're already contained in the earth. All of the gold, all of the oil, all of the precious stones, all of the jewels, all of the energy, so to speak, all of the the wealth that we trade for is already in this world. Man is not creating wealth. Man is discovering it or losing it or acquiring it, but we're not creating it. God creates wealth. God create, created the earth. God created all the treasures in the earth. Now, you think about all of the waves of of wealth creation that has existed over time. It's been because somebody was willing to, to discover what was already out there, whether it was somebody willing to discover that there was new land, discover what was on the other side of the, the Atlantic Ocean, discover what was on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, discover what was on the other side of the hemisphere that they were coming from, or those that drilled down into the earth to discover the power sources of coal and the power sources of oil, the power sources of these natural resources, somebody had to dig for those. Somebody had to create some effort for those powers to come forth from the earth. Well, I believe that in the same way that we're made in God's image and he made us out of the earth, he has secretly, if you will, um, hidden all the treasures of wealth inside of us. And it's our job to discover what he put inside of us and to develop what he put inside of us so we can distribute and direct what he put inside of us so that we can reach other people and change this world one life at a time. So it brings me to this passage of scripture I've been wanting to talk about a little bit more in 2 Kings chapter 4. It says... Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha and said, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditor has come to take my two children to be 
his servants and pay off the debt. I think this is something we can all relate to when creditors are coming knocking on the door. The creditors are coming to this lady because she's in debt because her husband has died and she doesn't have the money to pay the bills. Anybody ever been in a situation where you didn't have the money to pay the bills? What does she do? She says to Elisha says there she cries out to Elisha. So when you are stuck in a place where you don't know what to do, you don't know how to pay the bills, you don't know how to get to the next month, you're running out of money before you're running out of month and everybody's been there or most people have been there if they haven't unless they've been born into some some physical royalty. We all know what it's like to run out of money before we run out of month. We all know what that's like to have to budget something and to have to cut somewhere and to have to add something somewhere. So she's in a situation where she's come to a place of of financial duress in her life. But she cries out to the prophet Elisha. Now a prophet in the Old Testament represented God. The prophets and the kings represented God. And as a prophet, Elisha represents God. So she cries out to Elisha, but in essence, she's really crying out to God for help. And honestly, I know what's popular in social media today is thanking yourself, trusting yourself, um, finding the answers in yourself. But we don't have all of the answers by trusting in ourselves. We we should go to God. Now, we might discover that the treasure that we're looking for is actually inside of us, but it's because God put it there and we need God to show us. We need God to give us eyes to see. So I just encourage you to see yourself as this woman crying out to Elisha. Let's cry out to God. God, we need your help today. God, help me to not only pay my bills, but have more than enough so I can be a blessing to others. Boy, it's a simple prayer. God, I need your help. God, come through for me. God, show yourself strong in my life today. God, here I am. Use me. Here's my life. Help me un- uncover the treasures that are inside of me. Well, then it says to he, Elisha responds to her. So when you when you pray and when you ask God for help, you should expect God to answer, expect him to answer. It may not be the answer coming from the place you thought it should come from, but God's not limited to just the places that you thought it would come from, because if he was limited to that, you wouldn't need him because you already thought of those places where your help can come from. But going to God means he could answer you in a way that you never imagined. The Bible says the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, neither has it been revealed to the heart of man all of the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Wow. It's not in your heart yet. It's not in your mind yet. Your or it may be there, but you haven't seen it yet. Your your eye hasn't seen it. Your ear hasn't heard it. It hasn't been revealed to your heart yet, but it can be revealed. And I'm going to ask God to reveal it to you today, too. But notice what he says. What shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in your house. Now, we're talking about discovering the divine energy for your divine purpose. And he asks her, what do you have in your house? So everything you need starts with what you already have. Everything you need starts with what you already have. Maybe all you have is words. So speak words of faith. All you have is prayer. So pray prayers of faith. All you have is two hands and two feet. So move your hands and move your feet in a direction that helps somebody else. In other words, whatever you're missing, when you're using what you already have, whatever's missing starts to show up in your life. When you're not using what you already have, things remain hidden in our lives. For example, our our tongue is powerful, right? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So if we want to bring life or manifest life, we need to speak words of life. 
If we want death, we should speak words of death. Nobody, nobody here wants death. Speak words of life. Words have power. Words are carriers of energy. Our words are carrying energy. So really, if we could get a hold of this, that whoever harnesses the energy more effectively is the person who's going to end up with more time, more rest, more peace, more power, more more of everything because energy translates into some form of currency if you use it in the right way. Now, what happens is he says, what do you have in your house? So everything you need begins with what you already have. And then she says, all I have is a jar of oil. I've got nothing but a jar of oil. She starts out with I've I have nothing. But then she says, except a jar of oil. I have nothing except a jar of oil. So it's OK to admit you got nothing except one thing. She had a jar of oil. You have words. You have prayer. You have something. You have a paycheck. And if you don't have a paycheck, you have words. Let's go back to there. Say, I declare I do have a paycheck. Do, declare I do have a job. Declare I do have a business. Declare I do have clients. I do have success. Your words are powerful. Use what you have. She says, all I have is a jar of oil. Then he said, go outside and borrow vessels, borrow jars from all your neighbors, empty jars, empty vessels, um, and don't just get a few. So I want you to see that First, he reveals to her, this is how God activates. This is how we activate energy to meet our needs and to help meet the needs of others as well. We activate that energy. We activate God's power. We activate the currency of energy by first recognizing what we already have, thanking God for what we already have. And then he says, Go and borrow vessels from your neighbors and take the jar of oil that you have and pour it into the empty vessels. Go in your room and shut the door. Well, there's so many metaphors here there's so, in, in, this, in this story, and there's, so, there's such wealth here. For example, he, he says, go find empty vessels. And then he says, take those empty vessels into your room with your sons and your jar of oil and shut the door behind you. In other words, we have to shut the door to some things in our lives if we want to see our energy multiplied and used for a greater purpose, for our divine purpose. We have to shut the door to, to fear. We have to shut the door to negativity. We have to shut the door to people that are pulling us down. In fact, if we were really going to live out this passage here where he says, shut the door behind you, and pour vessels until the jar is empty. And as she kept pouring, she kept filling more jars and she kept pouring the oil. It didn't run out. But I want you to, I want you to think about something here that oftentimes we're not experiencing the kind of energy that we need. We're tired all the time. We're we're pessimistic, we're not optimistic, we're, we're doubtful, we're drained. What are some of the things that are draining us? Well, let's talk about them because these are the things that we need to shut the door on. But the things that are draining us, the energy drainers are our negative speech, our negative talk, our negative words. We have to replace negativity with faith-filled words faith-filled words, words that are full of hope and optimism, positivity. God says all of the promises of God are yes. We have to see the yeses and not focus on the noes. So we have to shut the door to negative self-talk, negative declarations, a, a mouth filled with doubt and negativity. Either shut your mouth or replace the things that you're saying you know I shared this I think uh, last Sunday or the one before that 
But there's a passage of scripture in Psalm 103 where David says, bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And he says, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. And then it says, and he satisfies your mouth, your mouth, he satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So when we talk about energy, who has the energy in this world? Young people do. And so he's saying, if you want to renew your youth like the eagle and have the energy that you used to have, have the energy, uh, I know it sounds like, like, a, like a sex pill now, right? To have the energy that you once had when you were a young man, right? But the point that I'm saying is, if we want to tap into the divine energy for our divine purpose, God's energy, God's strength, God's power, that youthfulness that everybody wants in life. The world is spending millions, billions, trillions of dollars to stay young. And God gives us a secret to youthfulness. He says, satisfy your mouth with good things. In other words, when good things are coming out of your mouth, when you fill your mouth with good things, not only are you going to be satisfied, because you're speaking words of faith and words of promises from God's word. He says your youth is renewed like the eagle. So you actually, your youthfulness is awakened by the things that are coming out of your mouth. Or you grow old faster by the things that are coming out of your mouth. But the, the beauty is you get to choose. Nobody has the power to choose this for you except you. And so when he says... He will satisfy, God will satisfy our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagle. He gives us a secret there that our youth is renewed as we fill our mouths with good things. That our mouth is declaring good things. He's not talking about what comes into our mouths, although that's a, another subject for another day because that's very important too. But he's talking about what's coming out of our mouths. And as long as we're making sure that what's coming out of our mouths is faith-filled words, big dreams, visions to help others, being blessed to be a blessing. Father, I thank you that everyone watching today, everyone connected today is going to be blessed so they can be a blessing. You see, that is a positive declaration and a faith-filled statement that you can say, Lord, bless me to be a blessing. Because if God can get something through you, he can get it to you. So God, bless me to be a blessing. Make that your prayer right now. Lord, bless me so I can be a blessing. You know, there's so much wealth that God wants to give you. Wealth of wisdom, wealth of kindness, wealth of love, wealth of joy, and wealth of health, wealth of finances. Everything, not one thing, but in every way. The Bible says that God blessed Abraham in Genesis 24, verse 1. God blessed Abraham in every way. He was blessed in every way, in all areas of his life. The Lord blessed him. And if God would do it for Abraham, he'll do it for you. All you got to do is ask. But we need to shut the door to this negative, unbelieving speech, words of negativity coming out of our mouths, words of criticism, words of destruction towards others, words of, of self flagellation, you know, like beating yourself up and criticizing yourself all the time. You say, I'm so stupid. I'm such an idiot. How could I do that? You got to stop saying that kind of stuff and say, I have the mind of Christ. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Something good's going to happen in my life today. A miracle is going to come out of my mouth. A miracle is going to show up. God's wisdom is going to show up. The, God's going to open the doors that no man can close. These are things that you can declare. Shut the door to toxic relationships also. We have to limit our contact with those that are bringing negativity in our lives. If it's the person in the mirror, start changing what you're saying. But if it's the person in your life, remove yourselves from the proximity of those people. You say, yeah, but that's my family. Well, then you got to cut down the time you spend with your family or find a way to spend time that creates positive energy in the things that you guys talk about. These are some of the things that are draining us. We're being drained by unhealthy habits. We think good habits take up all our energy, but the truth is good habits give us energy. But when we cut unhealthy habits from our life, too much coffee and processed foods and, 
and spending time on social media. This is a waste of time uh, when we're reading and scrolling so often, so much. And we all are guilty of this. People in I travel all over the world and I see people on their phones all the time, no matter what country it is. It could be India. It could be Africa. It could be you name it. People are on their phones and they're scrolling and they're looking for that one secret, that one word. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's pretty much the same. Be thankful, take action, be generous, master yourself. It really, it all boils down to those things, but we, we're more addicted to information than we are to action. And if you really want to have your youth renewed and find the energy to fulfill your divine purpose, we have to start taking action on the things that God says to do. Forgive somebody because unforgiveness drains you. Speak words of faith because negative energy drains you. Remove yourself from the presence of negative people because negative people drain you. Um, stop being on social media so often because social media drains you. Stop putting off and procrastinating things that you are just having to mentally remember that you have to do those later. Do it now. Champions do, right? We, we learned in the last couple of weeks, champions do and champions do now. And we have to take action. Action is the, it is the great uh, elixir. It is the great cure to anxiety. When you feel anxious, there's some action you can take to abort that anxiety or to cut off that anxiety. One thing that you can do is I believe that anxiety is a signal to pray. You can take a moment when you feel anxiety and start praying. It's a it delivers you from anxiety. I know there are people that deal with panic attacks. I know there's sometimes there's medication that can help those kinds of things, and there's nothing wrong with taking those. But let's also add to that God's remedies, which is prayer, reading his promises from the Bible, encouraging other people, praying for other people, finding somebody that is worse off than you and being a blessing to those people. Well, these are some of the things that drain our energy, but I want to get back to what will multiply your energy because oil represents energy. In the Bible, when we see oil, we see oil was for lamps to bring light. Oil was for healing. Oil was as, as a commerce to trade with. Oil is used as wealth. Oil is used for the anointing. We were to the, the Bible says both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament that oil can be applied to someone and the prayer of faith for their healing. It's anointing somebody with oil. Jesus talked about it, it's talked about it in several places in the book of Acts and um, in the book of James, for example, chapter five. So oil represents some form of power in the Bible, energy, anointing, ability. And so when this widow going back and wrapping up this part of uh, this podcast. It says when she went into the room, she borrowed all these empty vessels. All she had was one jar of oil, but she had a, a whole lot of empty jars that she took into her room and closed the door behind her with her sons. And they started pouring from the one jar into all the vessels. And as she pour, as she poured, the oil didn't stop. It says so she went and shut the door behind herself and her sons and she poured as many as they brought vessels to her. When the vessels were all full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there are no more vessels. There are no more jars. And then the oil stopped flowing. Now, I want you to see that as long as there were other vessels to pour her jar of oil into, the oil never stopped. But as soon as there were no more vessels, as soon as they ran out of vessels, the oil stopped. Here's what I want. Here's the lesson. The takeaway for us is when you when you realize God wants to give you divine energy for a divine purpose, it's always to serve humanity in a better way, to be a blessing to others, to bring the gospel, to bring help, to bring money, to bring uh, 
something that brings impact, positive impact and change into the lives of others. And so as long as you are pouring into others, the oil, because vessels in the Bible represent people. So the Bible talks about how we're vessels of God, how he has put his treasure and his spirit in earthen vessels. So God uses the analogy of a vessel as a human, a human being. And so as long as this widow was pouring into other vessels, as long as you and I keep pouring into others, the oil will not run out. There will always be more energy. But when we stop pouring into others, now we, you have to pour into yourself too. Self-care and self-health and self-healing and self-love in a positive way, that's necessary. Love your neighbor as yourself. That starts with loving yourself because then you can love your neighbor as you love yourself um, in proportion with, right? So if we're not loving our neighbors because we're not loving ourselves, start loving yourself in a healthy way because God loves you and you'll be able to love others. But as you're pouring into others, there will always be enough energy. When it's just you to yourself, you're going to run out of energy. But when you're pouring into others, the oil never stops. The energy never stops. The wealth never stops. Keep this in mind in the forefront of your life that life is all about giving. It's all about serving. It's all about making others' lives better. That starts with the gospel. That starts with introducing people to a relationship with God. But it doesn't end there. We want to be benevolent. We want to be uh, people who are blessed to be a blessing. And when we pour into others, there will always be enough energy. And when we realize the drain of things that are pulling from us and eliminate those things from our lives one thing at a time or minimize those things in our life one thing at a time, you'll find yourself having more strength having your youth renewed like the eagle, those who wait upon the Lord will gain new strength. There's new strength that you don't even realize right now. It's going to come to you, and it's going to show up in your life. Okay, let's pray together. Father, thank you for the energy, the power of the Holy Spirit, the strength that comes from being in Christ and Christ being in us. And we thank you that this will launch each person into their divine purpose, through your divine energy and divine power in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining me on Think Like a Champion. Share this with someone who needs to hear it. Subscribe to the podcast on our YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. And thank you to those who give. I encourage you, pour into others. You can go to lifechangerschurch.com slash give. Pour into others by giving. Pour into others by serving. Pour into others by being generous. And pay it forward, give to others, give into this ministry so we can reach other people. And I thank you in advance for doing that. There's a link on your screen, a place you can give as well. And until next time, be, be blessed. Like, be blessed to be a blessing. Say that, I am blessed to be a blessing. And keep thinking like a champion. We'll see you at our next podcast. God bless.